I know that you've been busy with this uh, investor event that you've been uh, working on in, in Madrid, pitching to investors and what to do with their capital. But I do wonder, the big question is, I know your, your government is suggesting perhaps we need to transition from pandemic to endemic, and that may mean the restrictions are not going to be as tough going forward. Is that what you're hoping for, to open as much as possible, go back to normal? Well, what's clear in our case is that the situation is very different to the previous two years. The vaccination process has marked a turning point since last spring, and we see that we're now in the, in the thick of the Omicron wave, and the impact is very different, and also our ability to keep the economy going is very different. So we probably uh, mm -hmm. are starting to see a transition phase towards this becoming an endemic disease which does not mean we have to stop being very prudent and wearing our masks and with the, with the changes that we have already introduced in our lives for the moment, but it does signal that we should take measures which are very different to the ones we had to take two years ago. And, you know, those very different measures, assuming it means, you know, they're more lenient, more open. What does that do to the economic uh, forecast and growth? Because I know there were a number of downgrades done to Spain GDP that you disputed, that you said you disagreed with. Are we going to see upgrades this year? Well, what we have seen for the last year is a lot of volatility in terms of economic forecasting. If this is a different, a difficult exercise normally, it is twice as difficult when we're in such an uncertain environment, also from a geopolitical point of view, uh, but more importantly in terms of the health situation. And so we have been uh, seeing in the course of 2021 many upwards and downwards revision. Just yesterday, the governor of the, Euro of the Spanish uh, Central Bank announced that they will revise upwards their forecast. So frankly, I think that we're in an environment which would require us to be particularly prudent when making our decisions and looking at real economy indicators of a more uh, frequent nature, which are very clearly signaling that the recovery was accelerating in the course of 2021 and give us also a very positive prospect for 2022. And, and the early indicators that we've had coming out of Spain are actually, to your case, and, and, and on that note, uh, pretty pretty good, better than, than expected. But I wonder, in a service economy with inflation still very high, with electricity prices jumping, I know that you've uh, subsidized some of the bills, but that's going to cost money too. Do you worry that inflation may remove some of the momentum? Well, the average inflation rate last year was around 3%. Uh, we have to remember we started 2021 with zero percent uh, price increases and uh, the uh, all expectations point uh, towards a sharp decline of prices in the second part of this year so you know i am more concerned about the underlying causes of the price uh, spike uh, because having a, a price rebound is not so surprising when we have a strong economic recovery after such a recession there's a base effect too i am more concerned about possible bottlenecks in international supply chains and, of course, energy prices. So, Deputy Prime Minister, also good morning from London. It's Francine here. How concerned are you that they will last in the next 12 months? So, first of all, what happens to the supplies and supply chains and what can we do about elevated energy prices? Hi, very nice to talk to you, Francine. Happy New Year. Well, um, I think that uh, all forecasting uh, institutions and also all large uh, international uh, suppliers and, uh, and logistics operators expect that the situation uh, progressively will normalize in the course of this year in terms of the international supply chains, in particular in the area, area of uh, ma semiconductors, which is key to some strategic sectors, for example, car manufacturing. So I would hope that this is going to normalize and there Therefore, that, that element leading prices up will, will progressively disappear. I am more concerned about energy prices because of the many geopolitical factors driving them up and also uh, creating uncertainties on that front. And that is why since last uh, summer we have been pressing the EU to take measures and to try to ensure that we have a stronger bargaining power when negotiating with large gas suppliers and also that our regulation, market regulation, is fit for purpose. Uh, Minister, inflation obviously a, a topic and a factor that the ECB uh, and Christine Lagarde have to have to weigh up. Uh, clearly, uh, we are not close to normalisation in terms of monetary policy uh, within the eurozone yet. But the time will surely come, and they are ending the PEP program. It seems in March. Are you concerned about demand for Spanish bonds? No. 
No, for the last years we have been, uh, we have seen growing confidence in the Spanish economy. Actually, in the last year we improved our long-term sustainability. We, our interest rate to GDP ratio has dropped below 2%, we're around 1.6%. We have been able to extend the average maturity beyond eight years. And uh, the scenario we're working on is one where we will continue to improve long-term sustainability in the course of 2022, even in a scenario of uh, progressive normalization of monetary policy, which, as you said, we do not expect all public statements by the ECB, and that is consistent with the midterm inflation forecast, underlying inflation evolution also, and the, and the differences between the European market as compared to the US. All these points towards, uh, towards the maintenance of an economic a commodity uh, monetary policy, which is what we need right now, but we're prepared for uh, an alternative scenario, of course. And, and when you say you're prepared for an alternative scenario, what does that mean? No, it means that even under a scenario of progressive normalization, as you call it, of monetary policy, change of monetary policy, in view of the maturity uh, of the Spanish sovereign debt and also the evolution of interest rates, we are expecting the situation to continue to be improving in the course of 2022, uh, as was the case in the last years where we saw an improvement of the long-term sustainability of public debt. And, uh, Minister, just a final question. Uh, Spain was the first country to receive money from Europe, the next generation EU funds. A lot of analysts say that this is uh, due to this competition with Italy to do things just as good as, as Mario Draghi. I wonder, that was the first payment. Where do you think you get the, the second payment? Well, uh, I don't think that we're competing with anybody in this in this uh, matter. Not... I think that the stakes are very high. No, not at all. No, uh, I think that here the stakes are very high for Spain because uh, the amount of money, the 140 billion that could be mobilized in public investment between now and 2026, is obviously unprecedented. It equals more or less what Spain has been receiving in transfers from structural funds since we joined the EU, and so this is a, a unique, a one. Once in a, in a lifetime, once in a, in a history, opportunity for the country to undertake a very ambitious investment and reform program. We have, uh, you know, every interest in pressing ahead, and that's what we've been doing from day one. We uh, accelerated execution of the program of the investment program in the second part of last year, when the when the plan was approved by the European institutions. Uh, we're going to reach cruising speed in 2022, and we also pressed ahead with very important structural reforms including labor market reform, which was adopted in the last uh, and ministerial meeting uh, of last year. And, and, and Minister, just very quickly, yes or no answer. It's still all grants and, and loans. You still want to get the full package. That hasn't changed. Of course. Yes, yes, of course, of course. We started with the grants, the 70 billion in grants. We're, we're awaiting the final allocation of, of money in the course of this year to start also requesting the loans uh, between now and 2026.